Welcome everybody, welcome back to Beloved TV. I'm here today to drop another video. I wanted to do a mental health check. Um, you know, it's been a while since I dropped the video, but I couldn't just drop a regular YouTube video with all that's going on. So I wanted to check in with everyone to see how everyone is doing. Um, I actually had to take a break from social media. Um, granted, I'm still posting, I'm still sharing posts. I'm, you know, I'm still active with the sharing on my social media because I feel like it's necessary, but I haven't really recorded a YouTube video because I've been using this time to, um, you know, do some research on my black history and just trying to really detach and like trying to like spend time with my family also trying to teach my children about black history and you know it's just been a lot like i'm just gonna keep it above it's been a lot it's been very overwhelming i've been emotionally distraught i've been angry i've been anything you could think of like it's just been it's just been a challenging time um you know covid happened i've lost family members due to covid um you know i know close friends and family and you know people that I grew up with childhood friends lost people to COVID COVID-19 and then boom we're here with this outrage of injustices so it's just been really heavy and I also wanted to send my condolences to all of the victims um all of the victims that have been um you know impacted by all of the police brutality and all the injustices that's all, that is going on right now, um, I'm hurting as well. I'm a black woman. I have a black husband. I have two black boys that I'm raising. So, you know, it's been very tough, you know, because I have to have these difficult conversations with my children about injustices, about racism, about people having authority and using their power and abusing it. I have to have these difficult conversations with my children. They just entered middle school and you know, I mean, it's, it's our harsh reality. It is what it is. So, you know, I have to have these conversations with my children. I have to explain to them why they can't go outside in front of the house and play cops and robbers and play with toy guns because my children are 11, but they're my height. They're athletic build. So they don't look like regular 11 year olds. So I have to explain to them and tell them like, hey, Y'all not allowed to play with toy guns. Y'all can't go outside in the front lawn and play with toy guns because someone might think you're a threat. Example, Tamir Rice, 12 year old little boy outside playing with a BB gun. Cops pull up, shoot him, no questions asked. His mother still has not seen justice. His mom had to bury her 12 year old son. It's heartbreaking and it's disgusting. Like, and it's, it's crazy. We've been dealing with this injustice, racism for decades at a time. Another example, Trayvon Martin going to the store, getting Skittles and an Arizona tea. He gets followed home and he's trying to defend himself and he gets shot. So I have to tell my boys like, hey, you know, you walk to the store, you go to the gas station, you know, don't wear your hoodie on. Make sure that you have a receipt when you come out the store because you don't want nobody to think that you're stealing. Like these are things that I have to go over with my children. And it's sad, you know, just like Amar Arbery going for a job. Like make sure you have identification on you. So that way, if you're stopped, someone knows who you are and they can identify you. It's just like an ongoing thing. Like the George Floyd incident, um, it was very heartbreaking to watch. I couldn't personally watch the video because I'm so tired. I'm so tired of seeing hashtags. I'm so tired of seeing no justice, no peace. I'm so tired. I'm tired. Like I'm emotionally drained from all that's going on. And, you know, Everyone was talking about the rioting, the looting. And at this point, it is what it is. It is what it is. I feel like people are out there protesting and some people are out there peacefully protesting. I feel like there's a group of rioters that are angry and outraged. And I feel like there is a group of looters. But you know, what we have to stop doing and what the media has to stop doing is, is they have to stop painting every black person with the same paintbrush because that's not what it is. Just like, the baby, he had a song that just recently came out. He said, every black person ain't dumb and every white person ain't racist. And I agree totally to what he's saying. You know, like, it's just, 
I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just lost for words. You know, I really, really hope that um, with everything that's going on, that, you know, we do seek justice for, for everyone. For everyone that was wrongly accused. For everyone that was, their life was taken. Because, you know, we have to also keep in mind, like, these black men that we're losing in our communities, we're losing fathers, we're losing uncles, brothers, cousins. Like, I, I have uncles, cousins, I have a little brother. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it just, it really sits with me heavy on my heart. And it's, it's just, I'm just at a little swords. I'm speechless at this time. And it's just like, I don't know. It took me a long time to even sit down and even do this video because I was going back and forth. You know, because I know it's a lot of controversy on how people feel about things and how people feel like, oh, we shouldn't be, people shouldn't be rioting and people shouldn't be damaging things and yada, yada, yada. I get it, but at the end of the day, like, what else are we supposed to do? When Colin Kaepernick took a knee and he tried to do it peacefully, he got blackballed out the NFL. Like, everyone has something to say. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we try. It's other. We try other methods. Like, they ain't work. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, we don't have no Malcolm X and no Martin Luther King of our generation. Like, we don't have that right now. So, do I think that it could have been done in a more strategic way? Absolutely. But in this generation, we don't really have those type of leaders. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like people are doing what they think is best. And I'm not saying that it's right. But I'm not saying it is wrong. I mean, I think a lot of things change with the uproar and with the riots and properties being damaged. We got a lot accomplished, to be honest. I feel like we're taking it's small steps. We still need justices and we still need, you know, these officers, certain officers to be charged. But, um, you know, we got the no not warrant, the Brianna's law that was passed. You know the no choke the no choke hold in New York, like so like we're making we're making little steps. So this uproar that happened, I honestly think you know it woke America up to be honest. And people used to always say to me because I used to always be like you know black people can't be racist. You like oh yes black people can, but how? Like we're the we're the minority. Like you know racism is like a system. And I, you know, I had this conversation with my husband. I had this conversation with my cousins. Like, you know, it's difficult to, like, have these conversations. But it's something that we need to talk about. Like, if anybody is sitting here and is just watching the media and y'all know what's going on and y'all don't feel away, like, something is definitely wrong with y'all. Like, something is wrong with y'all. Like, it's blatant disrespect. Like, this is just, like, injustices. Like, for centuries like it, it's 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 crazy like what's going on and you know like, i feel like now is the time to speak up now is the time to speak up say how you feel and fight for what is right like you get what i'm saying like when i had the conversation i was like you know growing up i didn't really deal with racism because i grew up <laughs> with people that look like me i can count on my fingers how many caucasian people that i went to school with through elementary to junior high school maybe about five and then I had to rethink I'm like wait a minute so I did grow up in um you know New York Housing Authority and grew up in the projects in New York and I'm like wait hold up the projects systematically I was in racism like I was born in racism like systematically my mom was a single parent she got public assistance like you know a project is basically where they put black and brown people in a community and they put liquor stores, fast food restaurants, there's no gyms, there's no healthy options to eat. It's basically a system. So growing up, that's what I was exposed to. So I didn't really have any, like, I feel like I didn't, I feel like I, I was with everybody that looked like me. So I feel like I didn't have those issues growing up or racism, but I think I did it, it was an eye opener when I moved here to North Carolina when I went to high school here and I noticed I was like okay it's real diverse it was kind of like a culture shock because I was not used to going to school with a lot of Caucasian people it was a culture shock to me you know and then dealing with microaggressions at work working in corporate America like I feel like I was more exposed to it here in the south versus New York but like I said in New York systematically 
I was basically living in racism and living, living in it, living through it. And, you know, I was thinking I had a gap in, a gap in experience, but <laughs> I was living in the experience, to be honest. So, you know, it's just been a real tough time. Like, um, with me even having these conversations with my children, I'm just still trying to learn my black history. I'm trying to like, you know, learn it so that way I can teach it to my children. So that way, by the time they become teenagers, they know that they need to earn, uh, like how to earn money, how to use credit, how to invest in stocks, how to start businesses. So that way, you know, they won't have to go through the things that I went through. So that's why I go so hard. And, you know, I make sure that I have what I need, the knowledge that I need, so I can pass it down to my children. You know, so whatever it is that we need to do to come together, we need to do it. Like, because we all we have. We are all we have. And, you know, some things that we could do to help, we need to vote. If you're not registered to vote, you need to go vote because that's very important. Everyone goes out to the polls for presidential elections. But you have to do the preliminary voting as well. Like, you know, that determines who's in the seats. Like, our sheriffs, our judges, like, our mayor, council, like, all of that stuff is important. So, first step, let your voice be heard. Go vote. Sign petitions. Send emails to mayors or senators within these states that all of these injustices and abuse of power is going wrong. Like, we need to use our voice. Like Riri said, Rihanna said, she said it at her speech. I can't remember what award show it was, but she basically said, you know, how many people have Caucasian friends? Like half of the audience raised their hand. Like she's like, you know what? Tell them to pull up because now is the time. Now is the time for everyone to speak up, to speak out and stand up for what is right. And that's just what it is. Texting your friends, your black friends, like, hey, are you okay? That's not enough. No, we're not okay. We are not okay. We are not okay. Like, our fathers, our uncles, our brothers are getting murdered broad daylight on camera. Like, video recorded. Like, we're not okay. We're not okay. And if anyone that looks like me and come from where I come from and y'all okay and y'all not saying nothing or standing up or speaking out about it, about it something is wrong with y'all like the time is now and i know i'm not a big youtuber i just started youtube but i couldn't dare sit here and drop another video without discussing what's going on because i'm a black woman living in america and i have a black family i come from a black family i have a black husband and i have black children and i'm letting my voice be heard and that's, that's just on that. We just can't forget about all the injustices, the racism, the abuse of power, all of these parents that lost their children that aren't getting justices for their deaths. Like, we can't forget about Kendrick Johnson. K Kendrick Jackson, I'm sorry, um, that was rolled up in the mat, like, in Georgia. Accidental. Like, come on, that's not accidental. Kenyatta Jenkins. Body found in the freezer. Like... Nobody knows what happened to her. Sandra Bland, Sandra Bland, Corinne Gaines, like so many names go on and on and on and on. And we just need to make sure that we do what we need to do as a community to speak up, stand out, and do what's right for our people because we all we have. And that's all I wanted to say today. And, you know, we just got to fight and keep strong and we got to keep going no matter what because black people are the bomb we're resilient we're strong and you know we got to stand up for our people and stick together we have to stick together during this time all right and i'm out